What's going on everybody? My name is Ryan. I'm a CPA and today I'm going to be talking about what the hell is happening in the stock market and a little bit about the crypto market, you know, because we're, we're experiencing some downturn, recession-like behavior. And what does that mean for your taxes? And I'll be covering all of that. All right. Now, in no means in this video am I suggesting or advising to do anything. I'm just running through hypothetical examples and telling you how they affect your taxes. So if you're watching this in July of 2022, you're going to see that the S&P 500 index is down about 17%. You know, Bitcoin is down about 55% and Ethereum is down about 60%. So we're, we're, we're down, you know, and this is from the, from the beginning of the year. So we're at a pretty significant recession type of market right now. And so what does that look like for your taxes? So, well, I'll start with stocks, okay? Since stocks have been around longer, they're more understood. So I'll start with talking about stocks. So with stocks, if you've been holding stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, that kind of thing, and now, and you've been holding it, and now the market has, uh, you know, has turned down, you've, you've, you've made some losses, and you're still holding those stocks, then you are not actually realizing any losses, okay? And same thing with same thing if you if the stocks increase in value and you don't sell, then you're not realizing any gains. So at this point, if you're still hanging on to the stocks, it's not going to have any tax effect in terms of capital gains or capital losses. Same thing goes with ETFs and mutual funds. When we're talking about crypto, it's basically the same thing. If you've been holding coins until now and you're still holding on to them, there is no taxable event. However, if you sell the crypto or if you do a swap, because I've, I've talked on my, one of my previous videos, a uh, crypto swap is the same as selling and repurchasing. So if you sell or swap, that would create a taxable event where you realize the actual losses on the coins that you sold. Now let's say you do sell some stocks at a loss. You know, you bought it for hundred bucks, right now it's worth 80 bucks and you sell it. So you took a loss of $20, what happens then? So now you've incurred a capital loss. Okay. And this happens for any time you sell investment property, you know, so if you have stocks, cryptos, ETFs, mutual funds, you bought it and then you sold it, you're either going to have a capital loss or a capital gain. And the unique thing with capital losses is that you can really only use capital losses to offset any capital gains on your tax return. Um, now you can use up to $3,000 of capital loss to offset ordinary income and ordinary income is any of your other sources of income like W2 wages, self-employment, ordinary dividends, you know, rental income, those things are considered ordinary income. And if you don't have any capital loss or if you don't have any capital gains to offset your capital losses, then your capital losses can only offset $3,000 of your ordinary income. So let's say you sold a bunch of stock right now, you, you, you realized a capital loss of $50,000, but you know, by the end of the 2022 year, you don't have any capital gains. So what's gonna happen is of that $50,000 capital loss, 3,000 is going to offset your other ordinary income, if you have other ordinary income, okay? The other 47,000 will, will carry forward to 2023 and you'll see if there's any capital loss or any capital gains in that year to offset your capital losses. If not, you're going to use another 3000, you're going to carry the remainder forward until you use up all your capital losses. And that's how that works. Now, just in case we're not clear to, to calculate your capital gain or capital loss, you're going to take your selling price of the assets and you're going to subtract your purchase price or otherwise known as your cost basis. So if your selling price is 80, but your basis is 100, then you have a negative 20 capital loss. So why in the world would anyone want to sell their stock at a loss? Okay. Now we all know the common reason is, you know, emotional selling, you know, you, you get scared, you want to get out of the market because everything's tanking. So you sell off to kind of cut your losses. And that's, you know, first of all, it's not a very smart thing to do, but that's like, the, the common reason why people sell, but is there really a strategic reason to sell your assets at a loss on purpose? Well, one would be to offset any capital gains that you might incur in the same year or future years. That's one strategy. 
Another is if maybe you, you own a stock that really has nowhere to go but down, there, it's a lost cause. There's no way it's going to increase in price. Like you, you have the information, it's very, very unlikely that the value is going to increase any further. It's only going to go down from here. That is when you can cut your losses for real. Okay? But I am of the opinion that selling assets for a loss just for the tax breaks is not that you know not that intelligent of a move because if you are selling right now when everything has decreased in value when in the future it will you know it will likely you know increase in value past the beginning of the year even uh, i don't think that's a smart move because selling something at a loss is still a worse scenario than selling something at a gain and paying the taxes on the gain okay because if you sell something at a gain you still made money and you're only paying a portion of that income on taxes. Whereas if you sell something at a loss, you have you know, realized your loss. You've you nailed it in. You pretty much solidified your losses. So uh, by doing that, you have intentionally lost money. Just save money on taxes. So in my opinion, that's not, that's something that I would do personally is sell assets at a loss just to offset gains. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to make a left turn here real quick and talk about mutual funds because I think there's a lot of there's some confusions about mutual funds, how they work and why there are sometimes capital gains distributions on these funds and you know usually they 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 result in unexpected tax bills. So uh, a mutual fund is a fund that you invest money in. It's you you would buy like a share of a fund and within this fund are holdings of many, many different stocks and bonds and you know different investments. And typically, these mutual funds are actively managed. That means there's somebody working on these funds, either selling, repurchasing, and rebalancing the funds to make sure it uh, stays within you know the the intention of the funds. So uh, the problem with these actively managed funds is you have these fund managers that are frequently selling and repurchasing stocks. So when they are selling the stocks within the funds, they're actually realizing capital gains on the, on the sale. And when they do that, they, they're actually passing the cost on to you, the, the, cost, the investor that's invested in the funds. Now, that doesn't mean you don't get anything in return. You do, get, uh, you do see some money from, from the sale of the stocks, you know, from the gains. Usually that comes as either a payment to you or an increase in value of the mutual fund that you own or a credit, okay? So you still get something, uh, but you're realizing some capital gains each year along the way as long as fund managers are selling and repurchasing stock. So something to be aware of if you have investments in mutual funds is you may face some uh, capital gain distributions that results in some tax bills that you maybe you weren't you weren't expecting all right the other thing with investments I want to talk about are dividends so dividends are payments that are periodically made out of stocks or ETFs or mutual funds um, and these are made to investors that just simply hold the stock okay so uh, there's no capital gains treatment here and I'll talk about that later but if you hold a stock and you don't sell it the stock happens to pay you dividends every quarter you have to pay taxes on that dividend income. Now there's two types of dividends. There's ordinary dividends and then there's cap, there's a qualified dividends where qualified dividends are taxed at the capital gains rates, which is a little bit more favorable. And ordinary dividends are taxed at your ordinary income tax rate. When you're holding stocks, you don't pay any taxes on any capital gains. There's no taxable events for holding the stock. But if the stock does pay you dividends, that becomes a taxable event. All right, so with knowing all this information, what should you do now? Like I said in the beginning, I'm not going to advise you to do anything. Um, I personally am holding steady in my investments. I'm not selling anything. I'm actually continuing to invest in the market steadily as I normally do. I'm not changing my behavior to try to take advantage of the, the, the market downturn right now. And I know some people may do that, but um, you know, I'm running a business and I have a family and I, I don't want to make any super risky moves. I'm just going to continue on with the with the behaviors that I am, you know, that I've kind of set in stone. So during a market t downturn, I suggest you don't make any really emotional decisions. Um, really 
take the take the emotions out of it, the fear out of it, and make your decisions from there. Okay, it probably will take several years of recessions or losses or you know day trading or whatever you want to call it to really get to get strong in your confidence to not make emotional decisions. All right, so. That's all I got for today. Thanks for joining me. Again, my name is Ryan. I'm a CPA. Be sure to give this video a like if you found it helpful. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'd really appreciate that. And share this video and my channel to anybody you think may find it helpful. All right, I'll see you next time. Take care. Stay safe. I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that say stick up. She picture perfect, so I told him I'm a flip.